What made my head spin was the fact that Matthew had been under the influence of his father and mother's control. It was beyond imaginary, yet it happened. I couldn't believe it, but at the same time I had, not, I had no choice but to come to terms with it. As Matthew entered the room at last, I smiled and stood, walking over and wrapping my arms around him as he returned my You're embrace. You're the best person in the entire universe. You know that? Oh, shucks. And you are too, Matthew. We held each other, locked in silence and unable to say anything more. We had been in a heavy predicament and we escaped. Sure, the demon lord may have still have had some sway over Matthew, but it wasn't enough to control him now. All we could do in the moment was hold each other and listen to our synchronized heartbeats. As the thought of tomorrow danced in my head, I began to fear it even more. Was I ready to go into battle? Was Matthew? Were any of us for that matter? We were about to walk into the final battle of a world war. Would we survive? Would I live to see Matthew afterward and feel his embrace again? Tomorrow brought too many questions to think about, and I became frustrated and scared. Yeah, dude, why not? We need a, we need some good luck, right? And Matthew needs some energy. For, it's 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 for Matthew's it's for Matthew's sake, right? Because he needs energy for tomorrow. <laughs> Make love to Matthew. I needed to hold him and treat the night like it was the last night of the world. Tomorrow was unpredictable, but tonight was guaranteed. I guided Matthew back and sat on the bed, slowly look, looking up at him before slowly easing out of my shirt, locking eyes with him as I slowly began to strip for him. His breath became slightly hitched as he watched, obeying my silent demand to keep his eyes on me. As I finally became bare from the waist up, I pressed my hands onto the bed and slid back, letting my legs up onto the mattress and holding them out for him to do the, the honors. I tilted my head, letting him get the pictures as I dangled. Letting him get the picture as I dangled my legs out for him. Matthew let out a shy sigh before nodding and biting his lower lip, and crawling up onto the bed, grasping my clothes and sliding them off my legs, leaving me completely bare for him. As he tossed my clothes to the side, I settled back onto the bed and held out my arms to him. Come here. Obediently, Matthew followed, kneeling between my legs and pressing his hands on both sides of my body staring deep into my eyes and making me come lost in his gorgeous blue irises. I slowly danced my arms up over his shoulders and felt his skin slightly heat up beneath my hands and making me slightly smirk up at my loving incubus. I'm all yours. I want you to take all of me. The carnal desire that flashed in his eyes made my body shudder even before his enthrallment began to settle into my body and completely encase my core in desire. I don't deserve you. Our eyes, our words became muffled lost in the air as he pressed his lips hard against mine and quickly began to discard his jeans, joining me in my bare exposure and taking in my scent as I relished feeling his skin against mine. However, what surprised me was him turning me over and wrapping his arms around my waist, hugging me back against his chest. I took the hint to grip onto the bedpost and arched my back away, my back for him, impatient. Then, pleasure racked through me and I became a moaning mess in his arms. The bed rocked hard against the wall as I dug my nails into the wood and took in his love with our lovemaking. My heart sung our arias of love as my core screamed songs of ecstasy for the man taking me. Again, love the imagery here. This was indeed our last night in the demon world, so we would relish the feeling of magic and lust melding around us as we soared to euphoria. Even as we angled ourselves to lock lips, our inhibitions became lost in the air. We became rough, rapid, and roared in the pleasure that rushed through us, quickly washing through our peaks once, twice, three times. We didn't care to count further, losing our senses within our arms. As our ride eventually had to end, we settled onto the mattress, panting and gasping. The natural musk of our sweat danced in the air as we slowly cuddled together and relaxed into the sheets beneath our bodies. I was dizzy, swimming in oceans of joy and love within Matthew's arms, causing me to nuzzle my head beneath his head to be his and kiss over his Adam's apple. I'll always be here in your and arms. I'll be here in yours. I promise. A sense of hope and courage wrapped around us that night, laced with our undying commitment for each other. We would survive. We would be okay. I felt safe in Matthew's arms, and I'm sure he felt safe in mine. We would return to the human world and be okay. Tomorrow would decide everything. There we go. If you are indeed attacked, you need to defend your fiancé the entire way there. Do not let him use his energy. No way! When you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one -on -one with the- Man. Well, I'm nervous. How about you? Yeah, <laughs> Matthew wrapped an arm around my waist and turned my body to him, hugging me closely. Hey. 
everything will be okay. I just realized something. Like, it's interesting that we didn't get to that scene where the cabinet got together and gave me a choice between betraying or not betraying Diana. I'm wondering if that's because of an earlier choice that I made. Maybe the choice with me picking the trap versus the curse? I'm not sure, but it, that, that storyline didn't seem like it was something that was unique to Damien, but if it is, I'm impressed because, again, that's another, yet another, you know, replay, replayability factor in there. I listened to him speak before, nodding to taking a deep breath. Everything would be okay, it would be fine. She said that we're all fighting for freedom and that she'll lead us to it. Is that Pretty it? Pretty much. Everything else she's saying is just to rile everyone up for battle. Okay. A pair of guards rush forward, carrying a flailing imp demon who was caught in chains and forcibly slammed to him down in front of Diana. She glared down at him and gripped one of his horns, pulling him to his knees. You should be thankful we didn't throw you into a stew like we did your partner. With that whisper, Diana dragged her nails across the imp's neck, slicing open five large gashes in his throat and making him garble out a painful, bubbly cry. Diana, however, kept holding his head up, focusing on the blood. The, poured, uh, the blood poured from him and guiding the energy that emanated from it towards the castle. With a flash, a large purple and red orb barrier that surrounded the castle shattered, fading into the air. The barrier that held the demon lord at bay was finally open, allowing us to, chain, to charge in and end this once and for all. Are we good with our sneak attack plan? We've done what we can to keep your way clear. We'll try to make sure the battle won't break through the path. I nodded, feeling the need to rush, need to rush nip at my heels, pushing me forward. My fiance seemed to agree, gripping my hand. Remember your surroundings. Be careful, all right? Make sure you stay safe. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there. And we'll return to the human world soon. Kick his dead body a couple times for me, alright? Right in the head. We'll be right here rooting for you and watching your back, okay? I really do love this part where all the brothers and wives, you know, give us our pep talk. We'll win this. We know we can. You can do this. We'll see you soon, okay? I smiled despite the nerves running through my body. I held onto my fiancé's hand and gave it a hard squeeze before receiving one back in kind. The journey became simple, with us running through the trees. The sound of the war echoed beside us outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the volume, but I shook my head and pressed forward, not wanting to become distracted. The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. We made our way through the thick of the forest, dodging each tree and root we came across. I could tell that something was ahead, causing me to grit my teeth and attempted to weave through whatever was there. As I expected, we were rushing near a group of imps who were about to jump into the war fray from the side as a surprise attack, making me smirk. They were distracted enough to not notice us. I quickly took my sword from my scabbard and swung hard at the group of demons ahead of me, cleaving through the back of their necks. They couldn't even let out a scream as their voices became bubbly with blood. As they fell, I continued forward, gripping my sword and preparing in case we ran across another group. My incubus kept up the pace, understanding that I, what I had done, but a little surprised me still. We continued to run forward, heading straight into another group of imps, and rushed past them, dropping my sword and slashing through the back of their legs, letting them fall forward to synchronize the game. It's really cool that even though I ended up not really training with anyone, that that Harakura proves that she can still she can still be formidable and take care of herself. <laughs> that was an awesome scream. The imps fell as the others ahead of them turned to become shell shocked at the sight. It must have been a big surprise to see a human cut down a group of all, the group all at once, but I wasn't so friendly and merciful, especially in this war, as I lunged forward again and swung my sword into the air. I became precise with my attacks, cutting down as many as I could in as little attacks as I made. There were a couple of close calls, but training with Mirth had kept me on my toes, ready for anything. Training with who? Who's Mirth? Which one was Mirth? Did I miss something? Is that a bug? My incubus, despite properly being- Oh, Mirth. Mirth was a dummy. Oh, that's right. I thought, yeah, Mirth was a dummy, I think. Why did I think that the dummy was named Mal? Okay, okay. My Incubus, despite probably being surprised by Carnage, followed as I continued forward, fighting through every imp that came in our way. I had lost count of how many crossed me, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. By the time we reached the, to the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead bodies behind me. 
I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of adrenaline and a lack of energy running through my veins. I panted for air, slowly focusing on calming down as my energy quickly depleted from its adrenaline-filled high. I had to drop my sword, unable to hold it any longer. That was all I could do before my energy was expanded, and a wave of exhaustion rolled through my body. I began to fall forward, exhausted. My fiancé, however, quickly rushed forward and caught me in his arms. Whoa! Are you alright? Uh huh? I looked up to see Matthew staring down at me, fear and concern dancing in his eyes. We were safe for the moment, so I merely smiled up with him and up, up, up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you, like you protect me. Matthew let out a small laugh before pressing his forehead against what my What would I ever do without you? I hugged him back, feeling relief that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, Matthew lifted me up and helped me to my Come feet. Come on! You ready? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Let's go finish this. With that, Matthew and I rushed forward to the castle. The final battle had begun. We quickly rushed into the Demon Lord's castle, desperate to get inside and aid Diana in finding the Demon Lord. As we rushed in, however, we stopped to see Diana and the Demon Lord standing off. Diana had her saber tightly gripped in one hand while she glared daggers into her opponent. The Demon Lord carried a large smirk in his, on his face as he stood on the dais of his throne. As Matthew and I entered, his smirk grew that much wider. Matthew, however, oh wow, that's his, that's his mom. Matthew, however, seemed to care more about the woman kneeling on the ground beside the Demon Lord with her hands on her knees, frowning at Mother! Him. Mother! Ah! There he is! My son! Yeah, this is playing all out. I'm loving how the final battle with the Demon Lord is playing out completely differently from- Get him out of here now! What? I stared at Diana as she continued to face the Demon Lord. What was she talking about? The Demon Lord simply laughed and pointed at well, Matthew. What are you waiting for? Claim your throne! What are you talking- At that moment, Matthew's body pulsed with a faint blue light. He curled over his body and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair. Matthew? Matthew, what's wrong? Get him out of here! I rushed to Matthew, now terrified to what was happening. Before I could place my hands on his shoulders, however, Matthew vanished into the dissipating afterimage. Huh? Uh, the sound of steel clashing caused me to turn and see Matthew and Diana clashing swords. Diana gritted her teeth as Matthew glared into Damn her Damn it, fool! Oh, boy. I said, take your throne! Matthew's body pulsed again, forcing him to push against Diana and send her flying back to stand beside me. As Diana reached me, she moved a hand in front of me, blocking me from Matthew. Matthew! Oh boy. Matthew looked up at me and Diana, his expression twitching from trying to maintain control of himself. His eyes flickered between blue and gold as he gripped to his sword tightly. I wasn't afraid of him, so I stepped out from behind Diana and walked towards him, holding my hands out. Matthew, it's okay. You can overcome this. Stay back. I ignored him and continued to walk forward, needing him to be okay. Whatever spell the demon lord had on him wasn't powerful enough to consume him. I needed to break his entire hold on him once and for all. Fight it, Matthew. You are strong enough to beat this. Matthew dropped his sword and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair and curling over himself. He scratched his nails over his horns, angry and aggravated. I don't want to hurt you. You won't, Matthew. I know you won't. At last, I stepped in front of Matthew's body. I gently tilted his head up and cupped his face in both of my hands. And of course, the demon lord is staying back and just, you know, letting me do this. You know, not, not attacking me or anything. He's just, you know, letting the scene play out because, because reasons. His face was warm from the mental struggle as his eyes flickered between blue and gold. I trusted him, though. Matthew loved me, and his love would crash through this spell. Let me help you. I quickly leaned in and kissed Matthew's head, making him gasp and freeze within my arms. I felt myself slowly drain of my remaining energy, but I didn't care. Matthew needed it more than me, and if I was able to free him, then I would. The air around us became lighter and easier to breathe, even as we separated. I stared into Matthew's eyes, seeing him stare wide-eyed at me in shock. They were completed. They were completely painted in gold, causing my heart to tighten for a moment. Did he Enough break it? Enough of this! Kill her! 
as the demon lord's voice reverberated in the air, a large sword embedded itself into the demon lord's stomach. Oh, go Matthew. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes, Matthew. Here comes the music. Matthew looked back to his father, his hand extended out towards him, as his eyes finally regained their ocean blue color. My heart began to jump in ecstatic joy. Matthew had broken free from the spell his father trapped him under. Thank the maker. How can this be? Impossible! You expected me to follow your orders, you sick bastard! I stared wide-eyed as Matthew turned around and summoned the new weapon into his fist. A dark blue aura emanated from his body, flickering like flames as he stared the demon lord down. You will never convince me to kill the ones that I love. Insolent brat! The demon lord gritted his teeth before sharply extending his hands towards Mo Matthew's mother. We could only watch his red ethereal chain shot out of the demon lord's back towards Azira, wrapping around her form and crushing her. <laughs> no! Stop it! More energy, woman! Faster than we could react, red lightning began to surround and shock Azira's bound form. The red energy traveled through the chains, holding her hostage and into the demon lord's body, making him glow a terrifying blood color. A large sword formed in the demon lord's hand, arcing with red lightning. Matthew's first sword, which was impaled in the demon's lord's stomach, crumbled into ash and fell to the floor, leaving a black scar mark. The demon lord's eyes, however, fixed themselves on Matthew's form with deadly I'll intent. I'll kill you! Faster than I had thought imaginable, Matthew stepped forward and vanished, only to reappear in front of the demon lord. With his sword held high as Matthew swung his weapon down, however, the demon lord held out his hand and forced Matthew back with a burst of red energy. Matthew skidded backwards, crossing his sword over his body to shield himself from the blast. As the energy faded, the demon lord's lips curled into a crazy then smirk. come, little boy! Show me what you can- The demon lord stopped, staring at Matthew as his body froze. I hitched my breath. What was happening? Enough. Everyone turned their heads towards Matthew's mother. Oh, I hope she opens up a can. Seeing her hold the chain that was- that connected her and the demon lord in a tight grip. Her body was shaking, but the rage in her eyes could make any demon fall to their knees. I will not let you hurt my son! Before the demon lord could turn and do something, a large bolt of blue energy shot through the chain and into the demon lord's back, causing him to arch back and scream in pain. <laughs> Heck yeah! That's my mother-in-law, everybody! That's my future mother-in-law. Matthew grabbed onto me and covered me with his body as Diana blocked her face with her arms. The magic was so powerful, the room began to shake violently. I watched from the cracks of Matthew's arms as dark black and red energy traveled down the chain from the demon lord into Azera's body, making her body pulse and grow in power. The demon lord, however, became weaker and surprisingly became much more frail. You are my... I am not yours any longer! Yeah, you tell him, Ma. Another heavy blue bolt rushed through the chain and into the demon lord's body, causing a splash of blood to jut from the demon lord's mouth. Matthew finally stepped away from me and began to walk at the demon lord, at the demon lord, forming a sword in his hand. As he did, the demon lord collapsed onto the floor on his hands and knees and growled animalistically at his it's son. It's over. With a, what surprised me was the smirk that graced the demon lord's bleeding lips and the chuckle that erupted you from it. You are indeed... The perfect son. Without another word, Matthew raised his sword and rammed it into the demon lord's neck, effectively pinning him to the ground and killing him. A bubbling cry of pain barely escaped the demon lord's mouth as, its, uh, as his eyes glazed over dead. My heart felt major relief, shaking a bit as a weight lifted off my soul. The demon lord was dead at last. I was free, and we could go home now. Diana spat to the side, catching to my attention. I think his own wife and son would be the ones to kill him. What have I been doing for the past ten years? I couldn't stop the amused smile on my face as Diana walked up beside me, rubbing her neck in irritation. Well, at least he didn't die this time, Diana, even though I think my last game with Damien kind of glitched and you kind of resurrected yourself. Uh, but hey, you weakened him a bit for them, I'm sure. <laughs> That's great, Harkora. Diana rolled her eyes as Matthew finally rushed up the dais towards his mother. Mother! Oh, they look so cute together. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. His mother wrapped her arms around Matthew, squeezing him to her. Matthew hugged her back just as tightly and kind, joyous to see her freed from the demon lord's power. I'm right here. It's gonna be okay. 
I was beyond happy for Matthew. His mother was safe now and the demon lord was defeated. I could feel some sort of weight lift off of my shoulders, knowing that the curse had been broken with his death. I smiled as I watched Azera cry in Matthew's arms. Ah, see, now I'm upset that Damien didn't get to save his mom because his mother, his mom had it rough. And, you know, it would have... I know that his storyline with his mom was very touching and it would be cool. It would have been cool if we were able to save Damien's mom. But again, we need to have diversity. We need to have, you know, major differences with each of the boys and this is a great way to do it. Before I could step forward to join them, however, Diana placed her hand in front of me, glaring ahead of her. I looked up at her with a very surprised face. Diana? Stay back. Um, okay. I'll listen to Diana, I guess. I nodded, unsure of why she wanted me to stay away. However, the intense expression on her face sent cheerful, fearful chills down my spine as she scowled at Matthew and his mother. Was something seriously wrong? I turned my head back to the pair, watching and wondering what was going my on. My sweet Sakeru. You're finally home. Uh-oh. Of course I am. I had to save you, right? Isara smiled and kissed Matthew's forehead, slowly rising to her feet with him. As she fully stood, something in the air changed. The room became a little more peaceful and bright as Matthew turned towards me and Diana. I guess I can finally introduce you to my fiancé. She helped in saving you. Isara smiled very softly and looked at Diana, passing over me. What? I felt a little angry at being ignored, but I understood. She wouldn't expect a human to be his future wife. The princess of Lilith's kingdom is your intended? What? No, no, no. Not her. Before Matthew could step towards me, however, Azera's face delicately scrunched up at the side of me. Why what the? is a human here? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Huh? Mom, that's my fiancé. The atmosphere suddenly changed again. The air became colder and something wasn't right. Something in Azera's eyes changed too, becoming hard and vicious. Uh-oh. A human? Uh-oh. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry, I know this is supposed to be a seriously intense moment, but the way that Ethan, the voice actor of Matthew, the way that Ethan voiced that was pure gold. I need to hear that again. I need to hear that again. Yeah? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, okay, time to get serious. Time to get serious, because his mom's about to open up a can on me now, and that's not cool. Azera locked eyes with me and I suddenly gasp and become lost in my mind, detached from my body. I couldn't move anything or speak a single word and her eyes remained their icy blue color. What was happening? Human. Who are you? I'm no one. I'm an army slut used for energy and sex. Uh-oh. Did somebody just make me say that? What? Matthew stared at me, completely shocked at what I said. I, however, could only stare at Azera, whose gaze continued to burn into mine. You are not expecting to be with my son, correct? Uh-oh, she's trying to make me say it. A human like me is not worthy. Instantly, my mind was my own again, and I released a gasp of surprise. I collapsed. Oh, thank you, Diana. Diana's godsend. I collapsed into Diana's arms as she reached out to catch me. Isaiah looked to Diana, offense clearly written across her features. How dare you! This is quite a twist. Quite a twist that Matthew's mom is not as... We're gonna see what's gonna happen. I don't... I have no idea. This is unexpected. Matthew, get away from her! What is going on? I looked up and watched as Isaiah glared at her own son and placed her hand on his chest. Her hand was engulfed in a dark blue glow that spread to the taint on Matthew's skin. Some sort of invisible force pulled Matthew back and slammed his body into the Demon Lord's throne. Ah! Matthew! As his body came to rest against it, blue chains wrapped around the throne in Ma Matthew's body. The chains began to glow and tighten around him, locking him in place. Filthy human bitch! You don't belong in this world, and you will never have my son! Oh boy. <gasps> Mother, what are you? Your mother's not here anymore, Matthew. What? She's been connected to the Demon Lord for too long. She's gone mad. Mad? I am speaking truth! The king of the demon world has no need for a disgusting human! What? Hey, hey, human lives matter, ma'am. Human lives matter. Don't you go pull in the race card on me. King of the demon I'm world? I'm afraid you are mistaken. Oh, am I mistaken? 
The Demon Lord is dead, so his son must take the throne! The Demon Lord is dead. The Rebellion has usurped the throne. Your son no longer has claim to it. <laughs> the Rebellion merely paved the way for the true king to ascend to the throne! My son was always destined to take it, and your little siege helped him achieve his fate! Oh Hold boy. On. Stop! Enough, Sekedu! My, the chains around Matthew's body tightened and he winced and choked out a gasp of pain. I instinctively reached out and tried to move towards him, but Diana held me back, protecting me still. Azera looked to him with sad expression, tears almost filling her eyes. When you left, I was so alone. I didn't understand. I always asked, why? Why did my own son leave me here? You broke my heart. Then I realized it was part of your destiny! Mother! You were merely preparing to take the throne! <laughs> you needed to experience the human world before returning and taking your rightful place when the time was right! That's why you joined the rebellion! No! No, that's not true! I came because the demon lord cursed! Yeah, she's cuckoo for cuckoo. Listen to yourself! You are a demon, Sakadu! Of the demon lord! Destined for greatness! Why are you fighting this? Because he doesn't want this, ma'am. Have you ever decided that? What is it with parents always trying to make their children, you know, go after their their dreams for them, their expectations of them? Can't they just be happy with their kids trying to be happy and not trying to force what they think will make them happy on them? Matthew pulled and struggled against the chains he was rat trapped under, no longer answering his mother. Isara, however, turned to me and Diana, rage dancing within her eyes. You poisoned his mind. You enslaved my son! I think you're the one that's a little enslaved, madam. What? It wasn't true. I loved him and he loved me. This wasn't supposed to happen. Why was mother's, Matthew's mother doing this? Was she truly insane? Diana placed an arm on my shoulder, causing me to look Don't up at her. Don't bother listening to her. Her mind has been consumed by madness. And you, Princess of Lilith! You dare oppose this kingdom? You swore your allegiance to the heir of the Demon Lord! Yet you marched here with an army bent on destroying the kingdom that you had pledged yourself to! The Demon Lord broke his promise and murdered my family while I was in the human world doing his dirty work. My vow changed accordingly, and I swore that I would see his kingdom fall. A whipped woman like you would never understand. Ooh. Whipped? I merely waited for the chance to kill him so that my son could take his rightful place. Let's not forget that I was the one to strike the final blow on the bastard. I am warning you now. Stand down. The room became filled with a dark energy as Isara glared hard at Diana, her eyes glowing a deadly gold color. However, Diana seemed to be unaffected by her gaze, returning the venomous look with a cold red eye stare. That's arrogance! You truly think you can stand against me? If it means finishing the job and freeing the world from madness, then yes. Azera snarled before a blue aura enveloped her form. Her eyes began to flicker between her natural eye color to gold as the room adopted an eerie chill. Uh, allow me to clear the field of useless trash! Oh, what I didn't expect was Azera shooting a blue and black chain at me, a large blade jutting out at the end intent on running me through. Before I could scream, however, I was pushed back and fell onto the ground, the air in my lungs rushing out and leaving me breathless. Ah! As I managed to look up, I saw Diana standing in front of me, wings splayed out wide behind her, twitching in furious rage. The chain in question had been knocked away and vanished into the air. I won't let you touch her! Has the human world tainted you, too? You're defending a human! You claim that I am the one who is mad! Stop it! Quiet! 